Hey everybody, so welcome back to the channel. It's your girl Rochelle from Rochelle Handmade Designs. And in this video, I am just gonna show you how I drafted this color block jacket that you are seeing today, okay? Um, so basically, you guys will see pictures of this during the um, grand finale of the hashtag sewing five and below. And I do wanna mention that this pattern is um, a five and below. Now the view that I am doing is view C and from the pattern itself, you need pattern piece number one, two, four, five, and six. So it's completely five pieces, but I am just using this pattern as a guideline for the color block that I want to do. So I figured today that I will show you how I did some pattern hacking in order to achieve the look that I am going for. However, I am not showing you the complete sew along in this video. This is just the drafting portion. Um, I will consider doing a sew along for this, um, just not in this video. It'll be a part two to this video at another time because um, I wanted to install a zipper and I did not and I wish I did, so I'm gonna do a sew along for this as well, okay? So without further ado, let's go ahead and get right on into this drafting process for Butterick 6328. All right, so I did this already for the sake of time. What you want to do is trace out pattern piece number one in your sides. So for me, I mean, <laughs> trace out in whatever size that you are going to be doing, um, do not, we're just gonna follow along with my pattern piece, but I believe the size that I cut was a size 18, I think. I think the size that I cut was either a 16 or an 18, I can't remember, but um, I'll go back to the pattern um, since I just traced this out last week, okay? So I just figured to go ahead and do a clean cut of what I did and I'll show you what I did in this video. So the first thing I did was went ahead and trace off my pattern onto tracing pa paper, it's transparent. So you wouldn't be able to see if I didn't have white paper underneath it, so I went ahead and put some white paper underneath it. Now, if you want to create a zipper, you need to add one inch to the center front line. So that's the first thing that I'm going to do and then I'm going to uh, cut my pattern piece out again with the center front line being at that one inch. Now, you can wait until the end, but I'd rather not do that simply because you could easily forget and then do what I did and don't have a zipper in mind. So just go ahead and put your pattern weights down or whatever you're using for pattern weights. I'm just using some coins from my husband's fraternity in order to um, hold my pattern down. I've been doing this for a while, all right? So the first thing you wanna do, the only supplies that you're gonna need is a pencil, pen, ruler. Um, you're gonna need tracing wheel, some tracing paper, pattern paper. I'm just using some old um, packing paper that I had from when I moved to Florida. And then you're going to need some Sharpies. Now, I'm using Sharpies in different colors to mark what colors I want for different sections of my um, jacket, but you can just use a pencil or a pen. I highly advise you to use pencil or pen. Um, for this, for the sake of doing this. And then you're gonna need some scissors or rotary cutters for, that you use for paper, all right? That's all you need. So the first thing you want to do is if you want a zipper, measure one inch at the center front. So go ahead and do that now. All right, so now that you have your zipper um, placement installed, go ahead and cut out the pattern all the way around. Do that now. All right, so now what we're going to do is go ahead and measure across your bust line, your waistline, and your hip line. So I'm gonna turn it this way so you could see this. And I already know my how uh, wide it is, but you want to make sure that you are measuring all the way across so when you zip it up, and everything it measures correctly. So I'm going to go ahead 
And because I added that one inch, I need to bring that line all the way to my one inch marking. And you're gonna do the same thing at the waist and at the hips. All right, so the next thing you want to do, like I just said, is measure. So take your tape measure, and I'm just gonna show you on camera for the waist, the bust line, and then you could do your waist and your hips the same way. All right, so measuring across, mine look like about 13 and three, and a fourth, about 13 and a fourth. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna mark 13 and a fourth on my pattern piece. You're gonna divide by two because you want to find the middle point. So just take your handy dandy calculator and take 13.25, divide by two. So I'm gonna grab my calculator so I can do that math for you. And the next one you want to do is the same thing for your waist. So my waist shows a 13 and a half. So I'm just gonna put 13 and a half on this line and then divide it by two. And the reason why we're dividing it by two is because you're, you have two front sections, okay? And I wanna find the middle point so I could completely hack, all right? And then you wanna do the hip line. So for the hip line, I'm gonna tell you how far up the hip line is from the bottom. So the hip line is roughly about, from the very bottom, it looks to be roughly about two and a fourth. So two and a fourth from the bottom is your hip line. So make sure you measure that up and measure your hip line and then measure that across to see what your hip line would be. So I'm just gonna measure from one end to the other end and it's 14 inches. So 14 divided by two would be seven inches. And then just finish up, finish off measuring the other ones. So go ahead and do that now. All right, so now that you have measured across your bust line, your waistline and your hip line, so what I came out with is six and five eight or 6.625 for my bust line. That's taken three and one fourth divided by two which gives me 6.625 and that 0.625 is 5 eighths. And then on my waistline, 13 and a half divided by two is 16.75, which is the same as saying six and three fourth. And then my hip line was 14 inches across divided by two equals seven. Now I do wanna make a note. So if there's any adjustments that you need to make, you need to make that before you add your one inch zipper and measure across. So if for some reason, when you measure your front and your back pattern piece, and it's not giving you the waist and the hip line, you have to make those adjustments before you do this, okay? Um, what I would suggest is testing it out using muslin before you cut out your regular fabric, just to see how it would fit. That would be just cut the front and the back pattern piece, sew it together using a basting stitch, and then if that fits, then make all of these adjustments that I'm showing you now, all right? So let's continue. So the first thing you want to do is I'm going to find my middle point. My middle point is this six and five eight. So I'm gonna take my uh, see-through ruler because it's easier doing it this way. And I'm going to mark six and five eighths. So I'm gonna do this for my bust, my waist and my hips. So go ahead and do that to yours now. All right, so the next thing we're going to do is from this hip line, you need to measure up four inches. So we're gonna measure up four inches from that hip line all the way across. So just measure up four inches all the way up across now. All right, so now that I measured up that four inches, I want to take the halfway point between this uh, four inches from the hip line and that line, which would be two inches. So I'm going to make a line at two inches across now. And I'm gonna also add a fourth of an inch to that two inches, simply because the hemline is one and one fourth. So I wanna make sure that when the hemline is folded up, it's not too short. So I'm gonna add that one and uh, that fourth of an inch to that two inches. So I'm gonna be making a line at two and five eighths. 
So I'm measuring up two and five eighths from the hemline. I'm sorry, down from this four inch line, I'm measuring two and five eighths, which is right here. And then I'm gonna measure two and five eighths on this side as well. And now I'm gonna make my line across. All right, now the next couple of uh, steps that I'm going to do, it's all about your personal preference, how you want your uh, jacket to look. So, because if you're following along with me and you wanna do it the exact same way I'm doing it, just follow along exactly to what I'm doing and it will be perfectly fine, all right? Now the next thing that I'm going to do is at this waistline, I'm going to go up one inch. So at the waistline, you want to go up one inch and make a line all the way across. Now, the reason why I did that is because it depends on how tall you want your fabric, okay? So it'll look, it'll make sense when everything is put together, all right? Now, from the top, the center front right here, you wanna go down two inches and make a mark. From this, armhole over here, I wanna go down two inches as well. So I'm just gonna put my ruler here. Well, I'm not gonna go down two inches, I'm just gonna go down to this bust line. So that I believe that is at right at about an inch and a quarter. So a little less than two inches, but I'm gonna go straight to that bust line and make a mark, all right? Now this is where you will need your French curve ruler because you're making an angle. And the angle is basically just going across your upper part of your body, okay? So you want to get a nice curve. It's up to you how curved you want it, but I'm just going to make my curve to where one end of your French curve ruler is touching that mark, and then the other is touching the other mark right here at your bust line. And you just wanna make a line following that shape. Now I want you to label this one number one because you will be connecting different pieces to each uh, thing that you do, okay? Now also, you want to try to find the middle point of that line. So I'm gonna use my um, tape measure to find the middle point just to make a notch there. So I'm just gonna crawl it all the way around. And it looks about like 14 and a half inches. So from 14 and a half, so I'm just gonna take my ruler, my tape measure and fold it in half, 14 and a half right here. And half of that would be about seven and a quarter. So I'm going to put an, put a marking, a notch at seven and a quarter, which would be right here. And that's, so basically what that is, is basically when this piece is attached to your next piece, there will be a notch right here for you to attach them together, okay? All right, so after you do that and add your notch, the next thing you want to do is go down from this bust line two inches, all right? So I'm gonna grab my ruler and I'm going to go down from that line two inches. Now it's kind of hard to see it, but I know this is a three inch ruler, so I'm gonna put my ruler at the one inch, make a line across there, and a line all the way across to my, my uh, zipper line that I added that one inch to. And I'm going to make a line there. So I want to make sure that it is actually even because it doesn't look like the lines are even. And it is, okay. All right, so this is two inches down from the bust line. Now, this would be number two, okay? The number two line. So basically, this part all the way down, this is your number two. So you're just gonna mark a number two. And at this line, you want to measure the distance across, okay? So measure, get your tape measure and measure the distance across from this line all the way to your zipper or center front line. 
All right, so I'm measuring across and it looks like mine is roughly about 13 and 3 eighths. So I'm gonna put 13 and 3 eighths and then I'm going to divide by two. I'll tell you what that is here shortly, okay? So go ahead and do yours now. All right, so now that you have your, um, whatever number that is for you divided by two, you have your number there. So what I'm going to do is I did my math and it's 6.6875 or six and 11 16. So I'm going to mark that, which my marking is right here for you. And you're just gonna make a dot there. All right, so now this part right here is the part where you want to pay close attention because this is where I make my triangles, okay? So now on my jacket, the triangle was um, right side up. I want to make an upside down triangle for this one, okay? So instead of my triangle going up, I want my triangles to go down, if that makes sense, okay? So what's going to happen is I'm gonna go from this dot all the way to this line. So you have your waistline right here, and then you have the line right here. So you're gonna go from that dot right here, and you're gonna angle to that line. So it's gonna look like this, I'm gonna show you. So you go from that dot to that line and make a line, all right? Now, what's going to happen is this piece is going to be whatever color that you want, and then this piece is gonna be the triangle that attach with a zipper, and the other side is going to attach and be an upside down triangle instead of right side up like I did, okay? Because the difference is I measured this line instead of the top line. So you wanna measure this top line instead of the bottom line that I did, okay? On my original one. So now what you want to do is you want to label this side right here, number three, and this side over here, number four. All right. Now, the only sections that you have left is section number five and six, and that's completely up to you if you wanna do like I did in my section where I had an Ankara section right here and a black section right here. That's completely up to you. You don't have to do it if you don't want to, but what I'm going to do is label this section number five and then this section number six, okay? Now, what I would do is go ahead and pick the colors that you want everywhere on your jacket, okay? So what, I'm, what I would probably do is, because I want majority of mine's one color, I haven't decided on the colors, but I'm just gonna give you a guideline of what I would do if this was the original jacket. I would mark black up here. I'm gonna er erase mine, but I'm just gonna show you this. Black right here. And then right here, I would say that I want Ankara or white, okay? So basically this section is everything to this line. And then number three, I would either want probably Ankara right here. And then number four, black, that's the triangle. Number five, Ankara. And then number six, which is the bottom, black. Okay, now you are not done here. So you are not done here. What you would have to do is now, what we're going to do is trace this onto paper and then add seam allowance for you to attach them together. So go ahead and grab some paper now. All right, so now that you have clean paper down or you can have dirty paper down if that's what you wanna do, it's up to, to you, no, no worries whatsoever. Um, the first thing you want to do is you want to trace out your pattern piece number one. So I'm using my tracing wheel so I could see it. So what you want to do is start from this curved line and you're just going to go up that line. And then you're going to trace all the way around that top portion. So go ahead and do that now. All right, so now that you finished tracing around, do not forget to 
transfer your markings as well with every piece you're going to need to have to transfer your marking. So go ahead and take your pattern weights off. And then what you want to do is go ahead and um, use your Sharpie or pencil and make sure you connect the line so you could see it. So go ahead and do that now. All right, so here is our pattern piece number one. So you want to label it as front one. I mean, if you want, you could put Butterick 6328 view C. It's completely up to you, but you're going to know exactly what it is. Now, I'm not gonna do every single pattern piece with you, but I will show you what every one uh, looks like. Now, after you do pattern piece number one, I'm gonna move this out of the way because you're going to need it at least five more times, okay? So go ahead and grab your see-through ruler. And because this portion right here, the bottom portion is going to attach to pattern piece number two, you have to add seam allowance. Now, whatever seam allowance you decide to add is completely up to you, but I'm only going to do a half an inch seam allowance. So I'm just going to make sure that I add a half an inch seam allowance along the bottom. So go ahead and add a half inch seam allowance to yours now. All right, so now that I finish adding my half inch seam allowance, you might wanna label it half inch seam allowance so you do not get confused with five eighths. So I'm just gonna label it half an inch SA. So then you would just go ahead and cut this out. All right, so let's go ahead and do pattern piece number two now. All right, so I have my pattern back down. I have some pattern weights on there. And now what I'm going to do is trace from where that line is right here, that curve, down the side and across this line that is underneath the bust line. So this is your bust line. This is that um, two inches below your bust line that I created. So you're going to uh, use your tracer wheel and trace all of that now. So go ahead and do that now. All right, so now that I have pattern number two trace off, go ahead and lift your pattern up and remove your pattern weights. And then you're going to do the same thing and go ahead and trace around that pattern piece now. Go ahead and do that now. All right, so now that I have my number two traced out, I'm gonna go ahead and give my pattern a look over because I know I got out of the lines, but this is supposed to be the line right here when I was making a straight line. So I wanted to make sure that it was matching up correctly. And it is, and what I'm going to do is go ahead and make my center front line right here. You wanna make sure you add those details to your pattern as well. All right, so now because this piece is going to be attached to pattern piece number one, you wanna add a half an inch to the top and a half an inch to the bottom, simply because it's going to be attached to pattern piece number one and pattern piece number three. So go ahead and add your half an inch now. All right, so now that I have pattern piece two completely traced off and I added a half an inch to the top and the bottom, I'm going to label it. And then you want to mark what this is, which is pattern piece number two. So I'm just gonna do cut to a fabric and then just put number two. All right, so now what I what you can do is go ahead and trace off pattern piece number three, four, five, and six, and then leave enough room so you can add your seam allowance because I'll tell you where you need to add your seam allowance also. So go ahead and trace off pattern piece number three, four, five, and six now. So pattern piece number three is like this trapezoid, I guess you could call it. Um, but it's from this line, that two inches below your bust line along the side and then down here, which is that four inches above your hip line. So go across, up, and over. 
So go ahead and trace off pattern piece number three now. And then after you trace off pattern piece number three, which is this box, you're going to trace off your triangle, which is pattern piece number four. So do both of those pieces now and make sure you have enough room in between um, the pieces you trace because you do not want to trace off pattern piece number four immediately right next to pattern piece number three because you have to add a half an inch seam allowance to that line. So go ahead and trace off pattern piece number three now. that we have pattern piece number three and four cut out I'm gonna add my seam allowance to the pattern pieces so what you want to do is you're going to add seam allowance to the top because this piece will attach to pattern piece number three and then this side piece will attach to pattern piece number four all right now one thing that you did not do on your pattern piece is you forgot to make a notch right here. So I did not make it on my pattern piece. So I'm going to go ahead and do that now. So I'm just going to place that right there. Okay. Just like that. And then I'm going to measure the distance of that line, which looks to be about 12 and three fourths. So that's going to be about seven and a half. I'm just gonna make my line at seven and a half. And then I'm going to transfer that on both of my pieces to make sure that when I mark them, they will be completely lined up. Okay, I'm gonna mark it there. And then I'm also going to mark it right here on this pattern piece as well. All right, so when I do that, all I'm going to do is right where that line is, I'm just gonna make a line there and make a line there, okay? So it's going to match up when I uh, stitch them together. All right, so what you need to do now is add your half an inch seam allowance to the top, the side, and the bottom. Do not add any seam allowance to the back um, portion of your front. On pattern piece number four, which is this triangle, you're going to add seam allowance to the top and the side only, okay? So go ahead and add your seam allowance now. All right, so now that we have our pattern piece number three, which is this one right here, we have that with the half an inch seam allowance added. You're just going to mark it three, cut two of fabric. And then you're gonna do the same thing to pattern piece number four, mark it number four, and then cut two of fabric as well. All right, and then you also want to add in, stating that you add a half an inch seam allowance. All right, so basically make sure you Write that on pattern piece number four as well. All right. Now the last two pieces, I feel like you could do on your own since we have done the main ones, but what you need to do is do pattern piece number five and pattern piece number six. So pattern piece number five is this section right here, these two lines right here, and pattern piece number six is this line to the bottom. So go ahead and trace off number five and number six, and then add your seam allowance to the top and the bottom of pattern piece number five. But on pattern piece number six, you only need to add seam allowance to the top. So go ahead and do all that now. All right, so I went ahead and did pattern piece number five and pattern piece number six right here. So all you need to do is go ahead and cut it out. If you want to go ahead and piece them together, you would, but everything would be with right sides together. You would sew your number one to number two using a half an inch seam allowance and then sew pattern piece number three and four together. So three and four together right here using a half an inch seam allowance. After you sew them together right here, then you would sew the top portion of it to pattern piece number two. So two to three and four using a half an inch seam allowance. Once you do that, you would sew five 
and basically you have three and four together you would sew the bottom of pattern piece three and four to pattern piece number five and then you would attach pattern piece number six to pattern piece number five and you would only do this for the front portion of your um, jacket and then once you do all of this you would just attach like you would normally do you could follow the instructions but if you are doing it like i am in creating a lining make sure that you cut two of lining in for your front pattern pieces so i know that it says that it's for facing however i use lining instead and you could color block the sleeves if you would want to as well well, that's all for this tutorial. I hope you enjoyed. Stay tuned for a sew along for this um, in the next few weeks. So if you did this part, just hold on to it because we will be doing a sew along to complete this pattern. All right. Well, I'll talk to you later. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. Turn on the notification bell so you're notified every time I upload a new video. So I'll catch you in the next video. And as always, keep sewing.